Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining me again today. If you're watching live, drop me a hashtag live in the comments. Uh, if you're watching on a replay, drop me a hashtag replay. Any questions you come up with when you're watching this, just let me know. And if I can answer them now, I will do. Otherwise, I'll come back to them as soon as I can once the video's finished. Um, I've basically today I'm going to have a walk through the the core extensions that I add to any new Joomla website, and also why I add them. Um, these are extensions that I've basically come to over pretty much eight years now of using Joomla as a web design platform. Uh, and every single one of them is, in my mind, essential for what it lets me do and for what the website can then do or, or whatever else with it once it's in. So at the moment, I'm still using Joomla 3 a lot more. I'm going to try and do some videos coming up soon on Joomla 4, walking through maybe the installation, where everything is on Joomla 4 versus 3. Uh, and have a bit of a catch up as to where it's got to in terms of features, technologies, the rest of it, because it has changed quite a lot. Um, although the majority of stuff you use daily now is probably still less somewhere, it's just in a different place or, or the menu looks different. Anyhow, so I would say in terms of one of the most important extensions that I've got uh, is by far a Kiva Backup. Uh, I went through this in a bit more detail a couple of videos back and Akiba I've I've been using for I don't know how many years is the free version and all of my client sites use a professional version which is obviously a paid solution however in terms of price Akiba is is one of the cheapest extensions in terms of the way the licensing works um, the pro version I think is about £50 a year but there's no limit on that you don't have to buy that per site it's it's a dev license you can use it on as many sites as you wish um as a minimal it lets you just run click a button and take a backup of your site which it stores on your hosting you can very very quickly uh there's no live backup there but you can very very quickly uh roll back to that backup if you make a mistake break something do something you want to go back to and on a live site it's critical for me i know that the majority of hosting providers do take their own backups but usually accessing those and getting those restored might need a support ticket might not be the most straightforward of things to do um with a keeper you've got all control yourself and if you get the pro version which is the one i say i use um you can link it with your cloud storage as well so i actually upload automatically the backups i take of the live sites go up to my onedrive uh, i can get them from there through the software I can download them, I can do what I want with them, I can I can do all sorts. And when it comes to also running a new site out to the live hosting, um, I can use that backup file very, very easily and quickly to just restore onto the live domain and away we go. Um, when I'm building a site, I will do regular backups as I go through the build. When I finish a page or I finish a big bit of work, I will do a backup. Just for my own peace of mind, I'd hate to then break the site or do something, whatever goes wrong or something goes a problem with it and I then lose all my work. I want to be sure that I've got a copy of that that I can go back to pretty quickly. Um, it's a dead straightforward install. It runs through the config and leaves you at a position where you go to the Desk the Admin control panel for it. You've literally got a big button that says Default Backup Profile. Click it and it takes a backup and there you go. Uh, it's it's as simple as that and the support from the guy that owns it is is fantastic to be honest as well it's really really good uh, he's one of the core Joomla devs that is involved very heavily with Joomla as well and he, he knows it inside out uh, what else have we got in there the standard one um, nowadays with the whole GDPR thing of cookies um, is the cookie policy notification bar this, this one I use is from web365 um where is it it'll be in there yeah web3 web, web357 sorry um it's extremely configurable you can just have it as a, a standard notification pop-up uh which it won't on here because i've actually clicked it to say uh you can have it where you can control the cookies the user on the website can tick boxes and disable and enable things uh, it'll got a button that'll reload your privacy policy, whatever you want to do. Um, and it's a great little tool for, um, let me see if I... 
Uh, this one hopefully has, unless I've been there and ticked it, you can set it how long again before it shows up. I've obviously been to this site and clicked it and said, don't show, <laughs> doesn't show up. Text, the wording, the styling, where it shows up on the page, all sorts of bits and bobs, what all the buttons do, what the wording of the buttons is. Uh, it's a really configurable bit of kit and I think it's relatively cheap. I think it's about £20 a year or so. And again, that licenses across um, as many websites as you want to use it on. Next one down, uh, I'm going to go down. I've got JCH Optimized Pro. I used to just use a standard Joomla cache and the standard compression in Helix um, for my site, but I got to the point where that wasn't quite enough and it wasn't configurable enough in terms of what it does and doesn't do. So I've started to use JCH Optimized Pro now for any live site. The, the main push I got for this one was when I wanted to start using a, a content delivery network with Joomla, uh, specifically for my use the Amazon Web Services One CloudFront. This has got settings in there to do anything you want to do. Um, oops. Um, combine files, cache lifetime, minification settings. You can exclude CSS, exclude all sorts. You can optimize Google fonts, JavaScript, HTTP, CDN, turned off on this because it's a build site. Um, it'll even handle something which I've never really looked at to before. Fair, but I, I need to look at this one. Um, it can also optimize images for you as well by default. And I think it'll also handle uh, PNG to um, WebP. And for, uh, for browsers that don't support WebP, I believe it will also dish up the PNG or JPEG version by default. So that's one in my back of my mind to look at at some point um but it's a great bit of kit that one really really good um any comments yet if you're watching say if you're watching live do let me know uh, i've got four viewers but nobody's passed a comment yet so i don't know who you are um what else have i got going on um next one down os map pro so site maps are quite a key well a very key part of your seo and you can either do a static one through something like xmlsitemaps.com but it'll generate one and you download it to your hosting or osmap pro or osmap i think it's a free version will do dynamic sitemaps so if you add a menu item it becomes part of the sitemap if you delete a menu item it takes it out the sitemap uh, it will link up with j2 store easy blog quite a range of other extensions to create the sitemap with those content items in it um, and literally, if you're on Google Webmaster Tools, you can just submit your sitemap URL. There's only two pages of mine. Um, you can also add a piece of uh, a line to your robots.txt file where that lets other search engines find your sitemap by default. Uh, and it's, it's a great little tool. If you've got a shop, e commerce shop, whatever, a blog, um, being able to know that those blog posts and new products are added to your sitemap without you touching it is, is a really nice bit of, uh, it's literally out of sight, out of mind, it does it for you. Uh, it's really, really nice and good to use that one I find as well. Um, next one down, I think we're almost there, to be honest, uh, RS Firewall. So yeah, by default, if you keep Joomla up to date, it is a, a very secure CMS platform. Um, but as everybody knows, there is no such thing as a, an entirely unhackable website. Uh, or OS or anything else that goes with it and Aeros Firewall Pro which is what I use um, protects against an awful lot of things that the standard Dream site it just won't do uh, it covers you against SQL injections uh, people trying to brute force hack by password guessing um, it will block list, block list and safe list um, logons that fail uh, it will auto ban them you can lock down users so that that user account cannot be changed by a hack attempt by somebody that somehow or other tries to do something with your site that you don't want them to. Um, if they try and create, you can block creation of admin users as well. So if somebody tries to create an admin user, whether it's through the interface of backend or through SQL injection or whatever else, 
RSI will literally just delete that user straight away, it will not let them create it. Uh, and it's been a really powerful tool. You can also country block if you use a GeoLite2 database. If you've got issues with specific countries, um, proxies or sorts, you can literally just block them with a tick once you've downloaded that Geo2, GeoLite2 file. Uh, and I, I'd like to hope that RS Firewall has saved a significant amount of hassle for me. Um, it certainly does log and tell you what it's been doing. Regularly on some sites, you'll see things on the system log where something's SQL injections attempted. A lot of them, uh, quite tellingly, tend to be WordPress paths. Even though it's a Joomla site, the hackers will literally just throw uh, a known um, failure of a WordPress plugin and they'll just try and load that URL from any domain name and you'll literally see them popping up. This one being a test site shouldn't really be out there, so nobody will notice it. Um, but it's it's a really great tool and I, I think any site nowadays should have both a firewall should be on your server, uh, but also in the software side, I found this incredibly useful to just stop an awful lot of the stuff happening that, that could cause you issues on your Joomla site. Hello, Diane. Nice to see you this morning. Um, what we got next? Um, in terms of what I would class as Joomla critical extensions, they're the ones that I would put in. Um, they're just by default, they should be in every site. And um, I'm, I'm only a one for adding extensions when they need to be there. Uh, none of those I feel are there for the sake of it. They all have a really useful purpose. They're all from really good developers as well. Uh, they're regularly updated, support is great on them all. Um, from there, I think a lot of you know I use Joomla Shaper Page Builder Pro for the designs, uh, Helix Ultimate for the template framework, Helix Ultimate 2 nowadays. Um, but other than that, that is my my core. Um, those one, we've got Cookies, JSA to Optimize, OS Map Pro and RS Firewall are the four. Uh, and one, two, three, four, five, five as those core extensions on every site. Literally, I will not really to do a site where those are not installed and configured. Um, that's the nature of it. Um, and I think in terms of my business, uh, I think a lot of people as a client perhaps think, oh, what, why are you charging that much a year for support? Well, that support doesn't just cover the hosting. Uh, an element of that covers the licensing costs and the support for me to update these as well. Uh, and if you were to license these yourself, then obviously they're going to cost you probably, there's probably a couple hundred pounds worth a year of fees to you directly if you were to do all that yourself. Uh, a bit more when you're adding things like J2 Store, Page Builder, that type of stuff. So generally speaking, um, my aim is you don't worry about that. As a, as a client of mine, I do all that for you. Um, and that's my five. Um, no questions popped up this morning. Somebody asked me on a post about setting up v VAT, uh, which is a UK tax on a J2 store site. I'm not going to cover that in today's video. Um, I haven't had anybody else ask me any questions, so if anybody's got any in the last couple of minutes, drop them in now. Contact form. Um, Diane, on, because I use Page Builder for my page designs, um, I can literally, the, the add-ons for that, if I just add a row in, uh, I can do an add-on. By default, it's got a contact form, uh, and I can set the recipient, I can set the phone field, I can have a capture, I can have a Google capture, um, I can set columns, colors, checkbox for G GDPR, custom button styles. Um, in fact, I'll add one on the home page as a test. Uh, this is for relatively simple forms. I would use this one. Um, I wouldn't use this if I've got complex needs. So I've got a standard contact form from Page Builder, uh, which lets you, you can change the layout of that a little bit, the colors, the buttons, the link colors and stuff, hover colors of buttons and boxes and areas. Uh, they've also got another add-on, which is a bit more complicated, which is a form builder. So this is, I don't tend to use this one very much. Um, but you can create your own custom elements. Um, you can do things like redirect on submission. Again, you can set captures up, uh, GDPR policy tick boxes, custom buttons. Um, 
that's a little bit more in depth that one um i'll be honest i don't use that one much i tend to use if i've got compli complicated uh no that one doesn't i know it's, it's not as complicated as that unfortunately um if i do have that type of need then i will use rs forms pro um which is an rs joomla one uh from the same people as rs firewall actually this one is immense in my mind this one has got so many features add-ins plugins to do literally anything it's quite good for um, um this one does save contacts it, it saves it in the database in admin you can export to csv excel um you can set how long it saves contacts for which is useful for gdpr um multi-page it's got a grid drag and drop system to create the layout um again captures are in it, available to use uh it'll integrate with mailchimp a few others uh, field types are a huge i find that one really good it's a little bit i think like the, the form builder for our for page builder there um the, the most time consuming bit is to get your head around the email side of, of things you've got to create the email that gets sent to you as the site owner um, manually although I've got a spreadsheet which I use to generate those for me for large sites because it's just a lot quicker um, but RS forms is is my go-to um, I'll maybe do a little video on that at some point if anyone's interested I haven't done one on any of those ones specifically but it's a really nice bit of kit and I like that a lot I use that an awful lot of times if people need more comprehensive site um, forms I'm just going to delete those off there because I don't need them on there. Um, and there they go. So yeah, RS Forms for me. I might, I'll might i put a few links in the comments later on for these extensions where I get them from. Um, I'm not an affiliate of any of them, although I accept for Page Builder uh, from Jim Shaper. I don't think many of the ones let you do affiliate links. Um, I've never signed up to RS Joomla because it's a bit more of a difficult one to do. But... If you found that useful, please let me know. Um, any questions that pop up, but I'll come back to the RS form ones, Dan. That's a really good one for me to do a little bit of a video training session on because it's it's really powerful. Um, and also a little bit, some of the bits you might miss uh, without realizing them there. Certainly when I first started using it, it was like, how do I do this? Um, but I've used it for long enough now that hopefully um, I can pass a bit of that knowledge on for everybody else to use. So anyway, thank you for watching. If you found it useful, let me know. If you're watching this on a replay, drop me a hashtag replay, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.